Welcome to Retrained Search, the podcast, where we lift the lid on what it's really like to work retained, discuss the stories we've gathered along the way, and give you all a peek behind the scenes of our amazing community and how they're getting ahead. Hello, Jordan. Hello, how are you? Welcome to this week's episode of Retrained Search, the podcast. Mm, everyone well, listening back, everyone. and of course to Jordan as well yeah it's been a few weeks since we last recorded one right Luke? I know because a few things have happened haven't they mm, they have you became a daddy I did I did Gia was born 27th of August um at just after 12 o'clock after a pretty traumatic morning uh but we're all here we're all alive and she's perfect oh she is perfect. I can vouch for that. I've met her, cuddled her, didn't want to put her down, didn't want to give her back. It's so nice. I'm so happy for you, Jordan. Welcome to yeah. the wonderful world of parenting. Although you've already um, yeah. experienced part of the impact of parenting, haven't you? Mm, yeah. Sleep deprivation is a thing. It is a thing. And you now told, you, you know. You told me it'd be a thing and I told you. <laughs> and I can confirm it is a thing. It yeah. is a thing. It really is a thing. And there's another thing, isn't there? You now know why I don't have any memory. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I was saying to you, wasn't I, Lou, that it's just incredible. Like, I don't remember like two hours ago. And and I don't know why, because all I'm doing is changing dirty nappies and feeding bottles. But I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I don't know what day it is, what I had for my tea last night. Yeah, it takes up a lot of mind space, that's for sure. Well, I um, I used to be embarrassed by the fact that I don't have any memory. And every time someone says now, Louise, do you remember? And then they go, yeah, stupid question, stupid question. And they don't, you don't, you guys don't even ask me anymore. And I'm not embarrassed about it anymore because it just is what well, it is. And I actually I said now. yesterday I in my call with Dave Wilson home, who everybody knows that we adore. And actually we've just been talking about doing... Um, getting our event sorted in Australia next year. We were talking about that yesterday, so I'm very yeah. excited to be yeah. doing that. Big plans. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, very. it exciting. is very big plans. And I was saying to him, actually, it's quite nice having no memory because it's like a goldfish. Like, you experience the joy all over again. And, like, I'll read something that I wrote, like, a year ago and go, oh, that's really good. <laughs> or, like, hear about something that I did or said and think, oh, yeah. That's quite interesting. And it's nice to like, and I don't know, just nuggets of information that you forget that you then remember and you realize. Anyway, there we go. It makes so me you've how become much a... your, how much you're playing down your lack of memory there. <laughs> I remember something I did a year ago. No, I'll, I'll be the realist here. Lou will speak to someone yesterday and then we'll say to the team, ah, have you spoke to John Smith? And we'll all go, you, about eight hours ago. Uh, but, oh, well, but but I'm very loving and kind and caring, and you know, I've, there's other things I'm good at. There there's is other there things. Are lots of other things. Um, so anyway, right. let's move on from um, my downfalls. And congratulations to you, George, for becoming a daddy. Right. And I I'm missed you a lot, and process. I'm very glad that you're back. That's what I'll say. I'm glad that you're back. Yeah, I'm writing off a car in the process. Oh shit! Yeah, tell everyone yeah. the story. Yeah. So. Um... My wife had said to me three weeks, the baby came two and a half weeks early and she'd said, I think we should go to North Wales for the bank holiday weekend. I said, I'm not sure that's the best idea, uh, considering it's two and a half hours away. And she said, I'm not due to give birth for two and a half weeks. To which I said, oh yeah, because nobody's ever given birth two and a half weeks early, have they? That would be a first, not. We agreed we would just go for the Saturday and Sunday when the traffic wouldn't be bad because I wanted to make sure, I'm going to apologise to any Welsh listeners that we might have, I wanted to make sure we got back across the border and I wanted my daughter to be English. So we agreed we'd go for the Saturday and Sunday um, at 4am in the morning. My wife goes, George, George, I think my waters are broke. We stayed very, very calm, um, very calm. So loaded up the car two and a half hour drive home we'll be back in warrington by half seven the baby can be born in warrington and six seven minutes into the journey 
this 50 foot tree falls into the road on top of the car cars are right off i'm stood on the side of the road with the police officer my wife next to me whose waters are broken it was all very traumatic but very me is what i'd say that's the type of thing that would happen to me um and <laughs> any of our listeners who are watching on video i'm going to show you a little picture of said car kind of see it there oh can you so, i yeah, don't know that you can like hold tree. it still hmm. oh i don't know yeah i don't know that you can see that it is a big tree i can vouch for that i mean i can laugh now because you're okay but thank god it it didn't like hmm. fall actually on you because it was like just in front wasn't it just in front slammed on we kind of skidded into it but it showed yeah. my commitment to work i think when the third right. thing i texted in the work group chat in the morning was have I got a story to tell on the podcast? <laughs> uh, oh, dear. So. Jeez. Okay. Right. Um, we've got some stuff to share with our listeners, haven't we? Because yeah. we've had some incredible things happening. And mm. uh, I wanted to do that. We're going to share some wins of the week to give everybody a little bit of lightness and um, share the joy. So uh, let's see whether I can actually do this i've got complete faith in there we go can you see that hmm. Hang on. yeah i can see it now remember we've got to read out the whole awesome. thing awesome yes i do need to read the whole thing because i know a lot of you are listening uh, on audio and not watching the video so this one is a little message um i think this came through the school group it was email um, to me and you. Oh, it was an email. Members. Was it an email? Okay. Yeah. It yeah, says, Dear Louise and Jordan, I had chance to review part of the material you created for modules one and two, and I must admit, it's really impressive. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you very much for admitting that. Uh, with two decades in HR and talent acquisition, I can tell you this material is a gold mine. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, indeed it is. Regarding the sales module, which I was particularly interested in, even though I went through it quite quickly, I can tell you that it's exactly what I needed. Thank you in big letters. Talk mm. to you soon. Mm. And that is from one of our members that's only just joined. I think he must have watched Max. it pretty quickly because it's only yeah. a few days. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, yes, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, so, um, this is a chap, he's based in, God, where is he? I can't remember where he is now. He's like, he's a nomad, like, um, you know, traveling, uh, goes where the wind takes him. Really, really nice, very entrepreneurial guy. Very good at um, recruitment and doing incredibly well, but wanted to develop, basically, just wanted to get better. Um, he says, hi, Louise. Sorry for not having been active here in the community so much because he started the course and I didn't actually hear from him for a few weeks. Um, and he said, I'm happy to tell you that so far I've done a six times return on my investment. I mean, that's bloody good going in a few weeks. Mm. The variable is I'm not doing any retained search. So I thought, oh, that's a bit strange. Oh, dear, what's going on here? And then he says, just intelligence gathering in two industries that I've found and are working well for me, which is really interesting because I've had quite a lot of people winning intelligence pieces recently, uh, compensation benefits, because I did quite a bit of that when I was with Armstrong Craven. I tend to do, you know, I'm helping people about and suggesting it all the time and yeah, so he, he says, I'm very busy between this work events and I'm attending, but so far I've found just what I'm looking for. It's a very different journey, but I am made for this. Isn't that nice? It's so nice when you discover pieces of work that aren't recruitment and they're not a, um, you know, a single search mandate and they don't actually involve making hires and still get really well compensated for it. I really liked that. And then, yes, another one, um, one of our mastermind members who was in Dubai, uh, we talked um, at, on stage maybe a couple of times in Dubai about winning work from the search that you're already working on. And so many people have been doing that since then. So we've just had the sign proposal, uh, taking on board what was discussed in Dubai, we've just had the sign proposal back on a follow-on retainer worth 15K. It was all discussed in the post-search feedback meeting. Um, it's only a 35k salary, but they really like the process and 15k was the lowest fee we would agree to take it on to apply the process. That stuff was magic. So that's nice, isn't it? 
Um, are you still with me, Jordan? Just checking. And then... Yes, um, so Aaron has just announced that he's excited to share that after a long and arduous process, my first proper retained project is creeping towards the finish line. And in fact, since then, I've seen the um, celebration of it being completed, navigated various obstacles and disagreements between stakeholders. It happens, but if you don't have the retainer, it's very difficult to navigate. Um, and have ended up with two finalists and they've indicated they would like to hire the second choice if the first doesn't accept. That's just bloody perfect, isn't it? That's exactly what you want. And an offer is being prepared as I write. As an added bonus, the HR director told me they have another more senior position coming up, which they'd like to apply the same model. And he says, awesome. So that's really nice. There's a few more, but that was the only ones I had time to um, get ready for you. Uh, so I, I wanted, I just wanted everyone to, to hear and see those this week because I know the market is still a little bit slow for some people and they, you just don't need to worry about it. Like get out there. Um, if you're using techniques and methods that other people aren't using, then you, you will win. You will win work. If you're just doing the same as everybody else, it's going to be a lot harder. So, Jordan, what have you been up to? What have you been helping people with this week? Yeah, um, quite a bit. One of the things that was a very hot topic in the Coalab call last week was, I suppose, a level of apprehension around selling retain to existing customers, people that they've worked with for a long time, that have good relationships. Specifically, one of our newer members had said, I've got this customer that, they're an absolute cash cow. They give me so much business on a contingent basis. I'm a little bit scared to rock the boat. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared to change that relationship out of fear that I'll lose it. And what would I do? And it kind of took me to something that you always say, Lou, right? That initially with customers, they don't they don't have to marry you. When, when we try and sell, retain, when we try and win, retain business, they don't have to give it us all, everything. All you're looking for is an opportunity to demonstrate capability, yeah. to demonstrate the process, to show them why this is so much better. The way that I did it when I was converting my old contingent clients is I would start with one of two things, either A, a vacancy that I'd been working on on a contingent basis and I wasn't able to deliver on that basis. Because it's a really logical conversation explaining to the customer why when working at risk, I've reached the end of what I'm able to do. Commercially, it isn't viable for me to go any further, but I can absolutely help you solve the problem if you can commit financially to me. The other option is go into that customer and asking them what's the hardest thing you've got on the desk at the moment? What's the one position that's causing you most pain, whether it's something you've worked on before or not, and solving that problem for them? Because... Yeah. If you solve the problems that are keeping them awake at night that nobody else is solving, that's mm. how you'll build partnerships that will stand the test of time. And I found that working on a retained basis allows you to solve problems that mm. the contingent model just doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it does. And actually, um, it reminds me that of the I, I was in Coventry with Rec Talk, the podcast, this mm. week, last week, actually. And it was great to be there and it was great to talk to Nitin and um, it's recorded and it's going to be released soon. But he was saying to me, but how? Like, I don't get, you know, you, most people work their backside off on a contingent basis and they haven't or they haven't been able to solve it on a contingent basis. What mm. what difference does it make if it's retained? Like with the best one in the world, I don't like taking retainers because what what difference is it going to make mm. and that and that for me is one of the biggest like barriers for a lot of people they they think well i don't want to commit to that because actually i'm not sure what i can do and i explained to him like sometimes what the financial commitment allows you to do is to go further it allows you to go deeper it allows you to prioritize that that position in yeah. the certainty that you've got that commitment and will make yeah. um the full faith right so it's worth taking your time and that means that you sometimes find people that you wouldn't find on a contingent basis because you can carry out a, 
a thorough and meticulous headhunting exercise. Mm. Um, whereas you might not have been able to do that if you were working on 10 different jobs on a contingent basis at the same time, right? But sometimes that isn't the case. And more often than not, the reason that you're able to solve a problem on a retained basis that you can't solve on a contingent basis is because of the position you're able to put the client in and the way you're able to carry out the project. Yeah. Because you're able to be fully transparent and you're able to share the journey with the client all the way along the way, collecting the evidence, collecting the intelligence and having the opportunity to re-steer it depending on what you find, you're able to put the client in the position at the end of the project where they're making their decision from everything that is available to them and they are certain. And that's why in a retained basis, they so often hire a candidate that they wouldn't have hired on a contingent process hmm. because it gives them the confidence and the evidence to be able to, to do that, knowing it is the very best option that is available to them. And it gives you as the recruiter the ability to drive them to that result and to influence their thinking in the right way and that's just in my experience that's a level of control that i never had when working on a contingent basis exactly exactly so um that's cool uh, what have i been helping people with um there's been two main things that i've been helping people with this week one is um compensation benefit studies so lots of our members are finding their clients are struggling with comp and bends uh, that they're either getting counter offers or they're getting offers rejected or they're getting people internally saying i'm not compensated well enough and um, mm. i'm going to leave unless you pay me more money and they don't actually know what the market is paying there's no data out there um with the specific skill sets that they are hiring for whether it's you know some of it's not particularly senior um, but it's specific skill sets like I don't know, Xamarin or whatever the, the, um, or C plus plus engineering or, um, sub C, um, uh, electrical engineering, whatever it might be. And there's no actual data out there for them to compare that's live and accurate. And before you commence a search, if a client knows that they've got some challenges around CMB or, you know, they've got challenges around CMB, it doesn't make sense to carry out a full search because you run the risk of getting to the end of the project mm -hmm. and, yeah them under offering and the candidate rejecting it. It makes much more sense for you to carry out an exercise of gathering intelligence and I you can identify talent along the way. So I always suggest that we carry out the mapping first, collect all the data information, and then decide whether we're going to proceed to the next stage. And that in itself is a CMB study um, and charged for. So we've got quite a few people um, carrying out those exercises that may or may not turn into um, uh, full searches, um, but they're really loving it. And so I've just been helping them with how to present the data, what to share with the client and when, and how to put it in a nice clean report um, that the uh, stakeholder can then take to the board to get the approval they need for the sign off of the salary range, increase in salary range usually that they need to, to be able to then move forward with the rest of the project. So that's been a nice thing that I've been helping Excited. people with. And then the other thing that I've been, I know, yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. And every time I see someone like, oh my God, I've just won a little CMB study. Like, yeah, that's great. Cause it really opens the door to a much more strategic relationship. Like one of our members, Harriet was saying that the relationship with the client is just so good. They said they've never done anything like this before. They've never had anybody work like this with them before. And they're absolutely loving it. Like every time they meet together, they've got new ideas on what they want to do next. And so she's um, really loving that. And the other thing that I've been helping people with is video outreach. Uh, so we're doing a lot of business development and a lot of digital um, marketing work uh, with our members at the moment and it's paying great dividends and what's working really well at the moment is um, video outreach whether you're using like a short loom video um, and keeping it simple or whether you're using something more sophisticated like an Audro, uh, which uh, we really like and lots of our members do um, a little short clip really personalized to mm. the stakeholder or the candidate to say, hi, I really like the look of your profile. I really like what you're doing. Um, I wanted to reach out because I noticed that you're doing this and we've just done this and I'd love a few minutes to find out a bit more about, about you. Um, and then there's a nice little link to the calendar and people are getting really good responses. Um, and in fact, um, what I didn't show actually one of the, that was, I wanted to talk a little bit about our email outreach because that is working really well at the moment and I meant to show you, which I'll read out again. Yes, so um, Rob um, in our mastermind shared 
happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're all having a great week. Uh, sharing a win this week as we won a CEO role, his first CEO assignment with a client based out of the UK. Um, this was a new client, although we did have a contingency role with them back in 2020 um, through the CEO they're now replacing. We've been in communication recently with a non-exec chairman through our speculative candidate mailer that we send out weekly that generates conversations, capabilities, possible leads and the occasional interview. So this is my first CEO mandate, taking it on myself. Um, the opportunity came. Um, so keep pursuing. It came from these mailers, generating conversations. You never know what could just be round the corner. So I wanted to share that because lots of people say that uh, email marketing doesn't work for C-suite positions and it bloody does. Mm. Yeah. Because it, I just wanted to mention as well. Anyway, so... Just because it made me chuckle. You yeah. mentioned Harriet. Harriet came on uh, one of the pitch coaching sessions last week and said, right... I've been really busy. I'm going to get back on the BD train, going to get out there and win some roles. Um, you know, I need some new mandates and um, came on the call and 18 minutes later, probably messaged me saying, well, that was great. Came off the call, called someone, won a retainer. That was easy. <laughs> 18 minutes. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Mm. I love it. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. And so we've always got um we've always got good stuff going on and we're always helping people, not just with the good stuff, but sometimes people hit stumbling blocks, they hit hurdles, um, and we're there to hold the hand and we help everyone through mm. uh through it. So we sometimes talk about LinkedIn controversies at this stage, and there was something that I wanted to raise that I saw in the last uh, week or so, which was a post talking about how you don't always need to sell on pain. And that it isn't, doesn't need to be that a customer is having, um, you know, pain in order to be able to, uh, in order to be able to sell something to them. And Jesus, you should have seen the comments. <laughs> there was so many, like, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of comments. Uh, it got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of traction. I was like, mm, this is interesting because I've always found that selling on pain is, is a really effective way of selling. Yeah. And actually, maybe you can sell in a different way, but selling on pain has always worked so well for me. Why would I, why would I not do it? Um, and... And, and, and I was thinking, I wonder what the comments say. Are they agreeing with this guy? Are they saying like, um, yeah, you're right, you don't. And it was exactly the opposite. It was exactly the opposite. And almost unanimously, everybody that had commented had said that that isn't, that isn't true. Even when a customer is buying something that's perceived as a better, what, I mean, what the post was saying that, that basically you don't need to sell on someone's problems. It could just be better it could just be a, 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 a better service and um and they were saying but even if you're selling it as a better service it's because it's solving the problems that the current service it, that it's that mm. it's an improvement and therefore but the pain it, is it's moving them away from service. whatever isn't quite right exactly yeah exactly that's exactly it yeah. that it, it and, and even if i don't know you're buying a um Oh, I don't know. Like I'm having my drive done at the moment. So I'm having somebody do my drive. That's because my drive at the moment is shit and it's really muddy, as yeah, you know, because you get trainers dirty every time you come around Jordan to my house. Jordan to Lou's house and get his <laughs> white trainers very, very muddy. Yeah. And and I didn't, you know, and yeah, okay, I'm doing it to get better. But the reason is there's there's pain there in the first place. And and so it was really interesting, the debate. And I just, I couldn't agree more. Like, do you have a feeling about that, Jordan? What, what are your yeah, thoughts? I, I think sometimes people don't like the word pain. They feel like there's negative connotations with selling a mm. game of pain. But actually for me, whether you want to call it pain, whether you want to call it providing solutions to customers, it doesn't really matter. It always takes me back to something that our good friend Dave Wollstenholme told me, which is the word sell comes from, I think it's from Latin origins many years ago, and it means to serve. And I feel like ah. when we have conversations with customers, it's about providing solutions to their problems. And by doing that, we are serving them. Now, yeah, there are other occasions. Sometimes 
sometimes we were, we we pitch retained because the contingent model isn't working for us and it's actually us that's in pain but for me if you are pitching for retained business or trying to pitch for anything without there being a need for it or without trying to solve a problem for either you or for the customer mm. i would argue the moral compass is maybe a little askew at that point yeah yeah or or that it's just not going to be that effective yeah. and and I, I love that i love that 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 you've just shared about um the word sell i never knew that um and the one that i always come back to is and i do you know i can't remember where i where I actually first heard it, but that all professional services are solutions. Mm. Every single professional service is a solution that a client buys to solve their problems. Now, I don't know where that's come from. I will go away and have a look and see if I can find out where it's come from. But even if you're, if you're getting a lawyer, that's because you need to arbitrate a discussion between two parties or, you know, <laughs> take someone to um uh to court to claim back money or whatever it might be if you need an accountant it's because you need to have your accounts prepared ready to submit to hmrc and you don't have the skill set to do it yourself so that in itself is a solution to a problem every how often has somebody sat at home and gone i really fancy i really fancy retaining a lawyer not for any reason (laughs) I really, <laughs> yeah. I, re- I just really fancy a lawyer. I, just, yeah, I, might, yeah. do, I might go and get an accountant while I'm at it. I just really fancy a lawyer. Right. Yeah, I know. And so that's where I went with it. Anyway, I think we're in agreement. I'm I'm in agreement. And and to be fair, like I think I've always found that there's enough problems out there to be able to just go around solving problems and provide solutions to people with very little resistance to 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 be able being able to do that without having to try and push mm, yeah. mod uphill and try and, and push something what, on someone that does, somebody even, doesn't really need you're right even the customers that aren't in pain now that don't need my help now i honestly i mm. i am um, i wholeheartedly believe that the contingent model is a ticking time bomb and if they don't need my help now uh, yeah. it's only a matter of time before there's one particular mandate that's causing them mm. real pain that isn't being solved. At some point, mm. they're going to need a solution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and uh, the other thing that came up, and it reminds me of the the other thing we were talking about. Um, I was talking about with Rec Talk, and that is that he was saying in in this market, though, you know, there are so many recruiters, and they're all falling over themselves for business. Mm. Yeah. Everybody will work on an, on a contingent basis. Nobody is is um, saying that they have to have money up front and clients can pick and choose and they've even got candidates coming to them direct. Like why on earth, how on earth do you sell a retainer in that situation? You know, they, they just don't need to. And that's valid too. Like I have to take a deep breath when people, uh, when people ask me stuff like that, but it sounds like it was a really what? easy podcast, you know, just some nice, <laughs> easy questions to handle. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus. I was, oh. I was like, I came out and I was so hot. I was like, oh my God, I feel like I've, like, <laughs> feel like I've like run, a, run a marathon. Um, but it, but it was, they're great questions, but they're just such big questions that I've got to, I've got to kind of go back and, and, and think mm. how, yeah. How can I explain this in the clearest possible way? And the way that um, the way that I explained that is what what you've got to re- what you've got to remember is just because a client has got hundreds and hundreds of recruiters um, at their disposal and candidates coming to them directly, it doesn't mean that they're having a good time. It doesn't mean that they're getting what they want when they want it, and that it's an enjoyable process. Yeah. In fact, having been in-house and having been in that situation myself and having known many, many, many HR and talent acquisition professionals over the years, and I know because I used to recruit them, I did it for several years at Hudson, and I've still got close relationships with people in that arena now, I can tell you 
that they're not necessarily having a good time. And, and, and actually, in a market like this, where there's so many recruiters banging on the door, they're getting bombarded with speculative CVs, candidates that aren't right, recruiters banging down the door because they're desperate for jobs on and desperate for revenue. And, it, and it's actually pretty horrible. And when you do need something, you can't see the wood for the trees. It's very difficult to filter. As soon as you put an advert out, you get absolutely bombarded. And the retained search solution, even for junior, mid, mid-level positions, even if it's not particularly senior, solves all that. Mm. It mm. solves all of the challenges that yes. are related with the noise, the um, the uh, hustle of constantly being bombarded by recruiters. So the main question that you want to ask is not what's the market doing and will the client buy it based on this market, but ask your clients directly, how's it going? Are you getting what you want when you want it? And is it a relatively enjoyable process? And if they say yes, fine, let them do what they're doing because most people aren't and, and say, well, like that's great news. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm. Having asked that question of every single client that I've met for the last 10 years, I can't remember any of them answering that question with a yes. There's yeah. always, it doesn't matter what my kind of market it is. And I've been through several downturns, a massive oil price crash. It doesn't matter what market you're operating in. Clients will be having problems and they will be having challenges. Yeah. And, and whatever's going well for them, leave it well alone. If that's going well for you, carry on. Talk to me about the areas that it isn't going so well, whether it's that they're getting bombarded and it's too noisy or whether it's like tumbleweed. And even for some of the most difficult skill sets at the moment, this, the candidates are, are very thin on the ground. Or whether it's that they need so, yeah, that, information yeah. or it, it can yeah. be a whole host of things. Yeah, can't exactly. It? Like, and actually the proof yeah. is in the pudding. For every customer over the years that I have transitioned from contingent to retained, there isn't a single one of them that has gone back to working contingently once I've had the opportunity to demonstrate yeah, that retained service. Same for me. Not one. Yeah. And and in fact, the thing that you get is why didn't you why didn't you tell me about this before? <laughs> yeah. 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 You do, you're right. <laughs> And then that's the only thing they're annoyed about. Like I could have saved myself so much time and hassle over the last however many years if you'd just bloody told me that we could do this before. And you could have uh, saved yeah. yourself time and hassle um, over the years as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that was our little um our little mindset minute, I think, too, because that's got, what I want to leave everybody like with. To about oh, mindset. have you? Same mindset. Oh, okay. maybe, maybe it isn't okay. mindset, it's just when this happened yesterday, I thought, that's great, right? And all I wanted to say is a lot of people, I think they believe this is really, really difficult, transitioning clients mm. to retained. And it isn't easy, mm. right? If it was easy, everybody would be out there doing it already. And Lou, you know as well as I do, our listeners probably know that isn't the case. Not everybody is out there working retained. Yeah. No, but, but it isn't. Well, rocket, we wouldn't have a business, would we? But it isn't rocket science, right? It, it really no. isn't. And I wanted to give an example. I was on an objection handling coaching session yesterday, and I threw the objection at one of our members, Ollie, who is 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 flying. He's going to do so well with this. And I said to him, um, "Yeah, I'll give you exclusivity. That's what you need, isn't it?" I said, "Listen, you have my word. Yeah. I'm the CEO of this company." Every decision goes through me. I'm guaranteeing you, you are going to fill this role, Ollie. This is this is yours. No one else is going to fill it. So exclusivity should do the job. And he said to me, well, if you're guaranteeing it me, then you'll just pay me the retainer. And I was like, oh, my God. He's got me. I'm right. If I'm guaranteeing him that he is going to fill the role, it's not going to cost me any more money. Why wouldn't I just commit financially? And it was so straightforward and so simple. And uh, yeah. so much of this is straightforward and you can do it too. You really can. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it really is. It isn't It isn't rocket science at all. I, d I do say, and I did say the other day, and it reminds me of, um, I, I was doing the pitch coaching session the other day. And uh, for those of you that um, aren't members, and I guess there's probably a lot, of our audience that 
of the 15 of you that are listening to us that aren't, I think we're aren't up to 16 yet members. Now. We've got to be up to 16 now, Lou. Are we? Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. Welcome, whoever you are. Um, and 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 I was doing the pitch coaching session and, the, and a couple of people were like, oh God, I haven't quite got, I haven't quite got my head around this yet. And I haven't, haven't quite, I don't, I don't, I f- you know, I feel like I'm a bit behind some of the others because there's a few, there was a few in there that, um, that are, are killing it and, and have, have got, have really hit the stride with it. And I said, firstly, don't worry because, you know, the, the, those other two have, have been doing this a couple of weeks now. So you just a, a step behind and everybody goes at their own pace. Like don't com- try not to compare yourself with other people. Like it's good to have a bit of healthy, like, Oh, well, if they can do it, then I can. Yeah. Um, and that's nice, but, but don't put pressure on yourself because what you've got to remember is like organically, um, this process would take five, six years. If you were to just yeah. gradually figure out what, the way of saying things and the way of explaining things that that then puts the client in the position where they're like, oh, okay, I get it, right, okay. So how does it work then? And then how do, how is it priced? And it, it would it takes a long time to figure out to change the way that you're doing at the mm-hmm. moment and figure out how to do it and then experiment in every client meeting over and over again. Well, if I say that, they then think that. And then they think that, and now that didn't work. And then you come away and then you book another yeah. meeting and then you're like, right, okay, how try it this yeah. way. And, and actually what we're doing is like a, a five, six, seven year shortcut. Like you're making the step to becoming a search consultant in yeah. a matter of weeks where organically it would take you years. Yeah. And even though, I, even though actually I'm going to backtrack a little bit, because even though I say it's easy, right. Or it's not as hard as you might think it is all of the lessons that we teach, all of the help that we give our members comes from our fuck ups over the years and comes from going, yeah, yeah, in there, yeah that that's what shit. I said. Don't, yeah. Don't do that again. Yeah. And actually definitely don't. Yeah, yeah, totally. calls and we, we've done it because we've been yeah, bitten yeah. on the ass and we've gone, shit, that was bad. So I'm not going to do that again. And we're just, as yeah, yeah. To be able yeah, to yeah. Help other people avoid those, those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's been amazing, like for you, um, you know, moving firms and for me moving firms and seeing like, you know, I remember joining six and then joining Armstrong Craven and looking at the way do, they do things and going, Oh my God, shit, that's good. Mm. Like I can see like why they have the pieces in the process yeah. that they do because yeah. it stops the problems that I'd been experiencing. And, yeah. you know, not only do you learn through your own mistakes, but if you're lucky enough to go and work for firms that, that do really well, I mean, they're not without their challenges, they have their own challenges, but it just, you know, different. just gets more and more sophisticated yeah. as, um, yeah, they're different. Um, and, and, and then you realize like how, and, and we've just had the benefit as well over the years of coaching and working with so many people that, have experienced problems and then solve them themselves. And then they share it with us. Like I faced this, so this is what I did. Yeah. And it's like, shit, that's really good. That's amazing how you've done that. Like, I mm. love that, but that they're sharing it because they want us to know so that we can help other people with it. Yeah. So yeah. what's brilliant is you, you need, you know, you, you're learning, you're shortcutting a lot of those um, those mistakes along the way in that trial and error, which of course you could do if you prefer, you can just go out and experiment over however many years and eventually you'll get there. Um, but if you want to shortcut it all, then, um, yeah, I, I don't know of a better place than to come and join us to do it. So yeah. whoever's yeah. listening, um, please come and join us and at least book into our, our diary yeah, so we can at least have a chat, chat with, with you. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and what do we want to leave everybody with? Just have a chat with us. We yeah. won't bite. We want to have yeah. a chat with you and find out more about you. And until then, until the next episode, hopefully we'll have 17 listeners then. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> God. Maybe. Exciting. <laughs> All right, go forth and conquer. I'm about to get on a plane to go to Poland, to Warsaw, to speak at the Tinzen um, uh, Retained Executive Search Conference yeah, in Warsaw. So I'm going to be away for a couple of days. So good I'm luck holding, holding the fort, I'm holding, George. I'm holding the fort. Um, but it's about time I did some work after Lou holding the fort for me for three weeks while I fed bottles and changed nappies. So I'm back. Yeah. In the words, in the voice Passing of the baton, George. Very good. Good luck. 
Nice. Bye, everybody. Love you all. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, that's another episode of Retrain Search, the podcast in the bag. Thanks for listening to our wild tales, LinkedIn controversies, and our top tips on how to sell and deliver retained search. Get involved in our next episode. Send in your questions and share your experiences with us by emailing podcast at retrainsearch.com. And don't be shy. Connect with us on LinkedIn and come and say hi. We don't bite, unless you're a Shrek firm, that is. We want to say a special thank you to our retrained members for sharing what's working for them right now and innovating new ways to grow and evolve. It's an incredible community. If you're wondering what exactly we mean when we mention our communities, well, we have two separate programs. Our Search Foundations program is for recruiters who want to learn how to sell and deliver retained search solutions consistently. And we have our Search Mastery program. That's for business leaders or owners already at 50% retained or more and looking to scale and grow and structure their search firm. We cap memberships to these programs to protect the integrity of the community. If you want access, just talk to us. Okay, thanks for listening. We'll be back very soon with another episode of Retrain Search, the podcast. <laughs>